Ezi proceed to release Father Victor's seventh group. I would like to request Dr. Kindi Soda, representative of Rashu Sundari, Reverend Father Nelson Sikwena, Kifo Jacinta, to come on stage. एक बार नेट कल नमन पादने का नहीं आइशा सेरे माय मगर अमित के बाद दिलिया एक बार नेट कल नमन ही तो फिर जा इस तरह उसी में वो मार्चे में आस आज रसा मुख्य निश्चय के नाता नेट डॉक्टर की पिशोसा जे जनसात रेक्टर सिंह सेवियर कॉलेज बॉम्बे प्रेसिडेंट ऑफ एसोसिएशन क्रिश्चियन फिलोसोफर सफिया विजिटिंग लेक्चरर बॉम्बे बेंगलुरु पुणे यूनिवर्सिटी और सेमिनारी आप जमाने के आजीवन से रहते पड़ोसन अभी कुछ आदत का तो यह स्टोर है माय मगर से लेकर आपी वेलकम टू यू डॉक्टर आप जमाने का आजीवन साथ आज जब सेमिनारी ए पुस्तक और फिल्म में आसा राष्ट्रीय सेवा में दर्जे वार दर्जे पालन बिल्कुल फेडरल चीन ताचे प्रतिदिन कोशे जना रेक्टर आज अपने आप दूसरे काम को लगन पाऊं तो हम ताचे प्रतिदिन कोशे राष्ट्रीय सेवा में रखिए रेवन पालन नेशनल सेवा के राज्य में आसा तुम चाहे माय मदद चाहिए क्या आई त Founder kami atau jasa tangkai amci mana itu, kami khusyuk itu. Dan yang ketiga, begini pun ada, ada objek terf bagi asal kami khusyuk itu je. Lokal pun ada suara. Atap laca ada khusyuk itu kita ni boleh boleh pun ada pun dia tak boleh beri. I will request Clifford Silva to introduce the book. Thank you. 
Hence, the dialectical stance has to be abandoned. What we really need appears to be an ethic of dissensus. We do not have to wait for the consensus of all. Let's agree to disagree. So we see Father Victor lives what he likes. After all, the Jacques Derrida, like Jacques Derrida, he is all for deconstruction and the removal of binaries and either or. You will understand more when you see the concluding article in this book, which is called Open Endings. In my opinion, this should have come right in the beginning, but that's my opinion. Because this article explains quite beautifully what this book does. Here, Father Victor takes a powerful plea to give up one thing, dialectical thinking. So, goodbye, Hegel. And open ourselves to two legged dialogical thinking. What he advocates is the reading together and thinking together. See, I've read it once. The reading together and thinking together of opposing concepts and placing them side by side. God and humans, not God against humans. Humans and animals, and so on. In this way, our thinking remains ever open, and this is closure. Here is how we enter the impossible, the zone of the divine, which will enable us to live by faith and not by sight. This book is full of deep thinking, sometimes complicated, and it takes the reader some time to absorb. But at the core of it, this profound thinking is really. Awfully simple. I can as Father Victor is. He can be easily visualized and convert in this book, and this is my wish. He can convert this book for the lay person into a book. Yes. Thank you for the privilege of letting me introduce such an enchanting book. It is a specialist book, and I am sure it will be required again for every student of philosophy and theology every Saturday. Also, that all of us can be with a new vision and live up this day. Thank you, Mr. Ambassador, for this beautiful introduction of the book. Pretty child, it's still okay. It's still not too strong. So, I think we will turn up for that. For any small and long, get that to be stuck. There are no salt pieces. Salt adds taste to your life and salt reacts to acidity. And he touch up the Roman that he is reacting to acidity. He is adding fish. He is preserving Amche ethos. And I think Dr. Amish Amche Bari Samaritan. Ami Dr. Amche Samadhan Meet the Lut Amche Old Depot Muni Kuru Sutta. And Ami Dr. J. Asif. आमचे समाधान वाईट करने चलता ताचे रामेश्वर मापता देना हाँ सोमसर चिली हाथे उत्तम अशे पूरा मेहमान था और उत्तम सब पूरा वहाँ जब गरुवा साइड के एक बार नेट फाल बिकते रखता है मरुवी ना अनि अमे या इस तरह की प्रकाश लेकरे आई रिक्वेस्ट जे गैस टू रिलीज दिस ग्रुप इन द मिडल ऑफ थिंग्स हाइफरेटिंग in the middle of things.
very brief because I want you waiting to listen to Father Victor and have your lunch as well. I will share three things. The title of the book is In the Middle of Things. So right now we are in the middle, we started mass and we have lunch. So we are in the middle of things. So three things. One is uh, in a kind of day to day level, what does this mean? Secondly, from a spiritual point of view, what does this mean? Today we are celebrating 25 years of our life for a person who is invited by God to be a priest. And thirdly, some few personal comments about Father Victor. Firstly, at a day to day, philosophers use the word existential, but day to day, right? With the level of spirituality, we speak of salvation. Christians, Hindus, Muslims, even people who don't believe in God have some idea of the future. But in our day to day life, what does this mean exactly? We are always in the middle of days. We have an idea, but we never reach up to that idea. If you take the economic life, the ideal of the economy is prosperity. All of us and our families, we want our children to be prosperous. We want us to be prosperous. We want India to be a prosperous country. But in the middle of things, we don't find that, that we are prosperous. So, the danger here is, it is good to hold on to ideas. The danger is when ideas become ideology. When there is no ideology, then we instrumentalize, we make, make use of people to achieve ends. There is nothing wrong with having ideas, whether it is salvation, whether it is prosperity and well But we should not make ideas into ideology. The second danger is when we give in to despair, because things are not too well. We want to achieve political prosperity, economic prosperity, spiritual prosperity, cultural prosperity. That means, what is cultural prosperity? To have a sense of achievement, accomplishment. We often find ourselves in the middle of things. Now these children who work, they put on that uh, they start play to put the songs for us. Now they are learning now. They have a beautiful school. Now when children are learning to play an instrument, they are in the middle of things. That is not very pleasant to hear, right? When you are listening to people who are learning music instrument. But life is like that. Often. We have ideas. We are approaching them, but we find ourselves in the middle of things. So, to avoid those two dangers, to convert ideas into ideology, and to allow the, the frustrations of the moment to cause despair. That is another day to day level. The level of spirituality, we are celebrating 25 years of sacerdotal ministry ordination. The level of spirituality, we have, we know the saints, when we say Francis Xavier has spoken of because of this controversy, but many saints that we know of, we are leading their lives many years after they have died. So for us, they are saints. But they struggle through their lives. They live ordinary lives like you and me. They lift up to their ideas and they struggle. So they were always in the middle of things. So even though we want to be saints up to our ideas, in their own conscious lives, they live like us. They struggle to do well to be true to what God called them to There is a book by one a mystical writer, Eckhart Tolle, Eckhart Tolle, a German who was in Canada called The Power of Now, The Power of Now. He used to sum up about depression. And one day he suddenly woke up and he was not depressed anymore. And he discovered why he was depressed. Because all the time he was thinking about the past, mistakes he had made, and the future worries. In the middle of things, we have the now. And his only message is enjoy the now. The now is in the middle of things. Nothing wrong with planning for the future, remembering the past. Now, the cross, since we are a spiritual being, the cross of Jesus is a beautiful symbol of being in the middle of things. Jesus, we understand as a redeemer, we understand Jesus to be present to us, where he is, in the blessed sacrament, where two of you are so that is the story, the narrative of Jesus. Where does the cross appear? The cross appears in the middle of things, in the middle of that story. Is it bad or is it good? The cross. We have taken something bad and sanctified it because Jesus sanctifies the cross by his life and actions and then yesterday. The cross is a beautiful symbol because for us, for most of us, whether we are priests or lay people, the middle of things is always sometimes tough. Sometimes we have to struggle. Having said that now, the last 
few points about Father Victor. Father Victor is very much a person who has a Vijay Sardes, I said, and Clifford also mentioned. All this is the blank, blank is many extremes. He is in the middle of dynamic middle, not a static, he picks on a dynamic middle. He is a very busy man. At the same time, he goes out to relax and goes to know, he calm, enjoy life. He is very flexible, at the same time he is very stubborn with regard to some of his views. But that stubbornness is a sort of a holy stubbornness. It comes from conviction. He can be convinced about certain positions, certain views. Though he is flexible, there is a postmodern, that is a philosophy of flexibility. He, he, is a very, he writes in a very abstract manner. In fact, Vijay himself also, I keep on telling you, to write in a simple manner because then you can reach more people. So he says, when I speak, it is simple, when I write, it is more. He's very, he writes very abstractly, but he is extremely observant. He notices small things and he has a very good memory. So he pays attention to details. Most importantly, and I think that, that one thing I notice about Father Victor is uh, that he is a man who respects people, respects life. Respects animals, respects people, no matter how big people are, no matter how small people are. That, where does that come from? It is said that as Christians we have those three virtues of faith, hope and love. Faith is based on the past. And as a priest, he has inculcated faith in the world. Hope is based on the future. We all want salvation, political well-being. But of these three, faith, hope and love, the greatest of these is love. And one of the best ways to manifest love is to respect. Respect others, respect ourselves, respect nature, respect the country, respect the environment. So, thank you Father Victor for bringing out this book. As Clifford said, it may be just like beyond, difficult to enjoy at first. But once you get used to his writing, you will get to enjoy it. I, I wish you many happy years of priesthood. You have a lot to contribute in this area of sacred secularity. You are combining holiness with civic responsibility, which is a very beautiful combination. You are combining being a Christian with being a world citizen, inviting people of all faiths and of no faith to be part of your embrace of love. And this attitude, this disposition is badly needed now in our today. If you want to reach that idea of harmony, we need more Father Victors. We pray to the Lord for more Father Victors, but for the moment we will give thanks for this one. Thank you. Dinivas, thank you. Ya Shobit Pashna Uropatina, Father Chi, Ali, Tata Uropa Chi, Pura Kaptake. Ishinu, Ishinu, Epistok. In the middle of things, why do to be weak to get a solution of your work done? But as to me, I am a provider, to check a thin share of the army book, that cover to me thin share of the new job. Fifty percent discount, they buy it, other than the art labor stock, artificial intelligence, and the pretty as a theory, as they are so much of the thin share of it. कांडरी पुस्तक को बारों देखी थे जब पुरों को सोचने आए वो प्राण अपना रखी स्टोल है ब्रदर लॉरेंस ताकि लगे केजू उनके लिए ना लेकिन क्या शुभकामना को सुनके इस पौष्य आड़ू नहीं सामने आए अतः तो इसलिए लिया पौष्य के दस्ते ने बड़े चुपचाप पुस्तक का कार्य दिला ब्रदर लॉरेंस अलग ही पौष्य � so I can set up a miracle to push that to be great for them for the victim of the human book. Thank you, Agnello. In the middle of things, in the moment I am going to be, because COVID is in the middle of our lives. And you know it disrupted us and almost made us prisoners of our homes. And that made me think that life in the middle of it. In fact, I am not one who thinks linearly. First step, second step, third step, fourth step, you go up. It's a linear way of thinking. Now, this is one way which I don't reject, but I put side by side. There's another way of thinking, and that's the horizontal way. 
disruptive life up there, going up every day and progressing and going towards so called we close the door and we start thinking like this. Instead of that, start opening your thoughts and you see it widens and you see horizontal side by side. To put it very simply, Vijay would remember your sister who was my friend Arvi. Uh, she brought to our notice that the Kokini people are talking Kokini in a very different way than others. Like we use two words side by side. What do you call arms? Good. Then we talk about white, big, so big, sundar. Like that you go on, moti, dango. We put same words together side by side. And that is what is this logic about. Instead of saying either or, either or is not logic of hyphenation. And in Greek, Plato brought us what is called the logic of Kora. Kora means between the teles celestial and the terrestrial and the zone in between. And he called it Kora. And so there is this in between, between either and or, between what you call light and darkness. There is something between. And that's the middle of it. We have not agreed somewhere. We have set some goals, but you see, on the Dhamma, this happens. Life is always dynamic, but not always going in one line, like a river. It goes this way also. It goes this way also. And so when I start putting things side by side, things look different. Otherwise, we are governed by Aristotelian logic, which is called either or. I got it for 20 years. And I'm, I'm also interestingly not a person who likes it. Therefore, when I say this book is hyphenating, hyphenating theology with philosophy, you know what is hyphenation? That's what we do in open. Answer to God, what is the hyphenation? And that's exactly what I have done with my life. There's a Hindu in me, it's hyphenated. And that's why Vijay could be one of my friends representing today and give a toast. It's hyphenation. I'm not either Christian and he's a let us say. It's not either or. The moment we are close to either or we have lost something. We have lost the middle of life. And life does happen in the middle. Suddenly in the middle of everything happening, today I invited for this event. And the needle is very, very powerful, very dynamic. And that's what I learned, not from Derrida, by the way, from another French speaker called Delius. And so that was the inspiration. But Derrida has been my passion for a long time. Because the logic that we do use, either as Christians or either as Hindus or Muslims, is always either or. Either you are Christian, you cannot be anything else. You be something else, you are condemned. I am trying to find the middle. Where is the middle? Though Aristotle gave us, virtue stands in the middle, and we all forgot that. Virtue standing in the middle. Arete is the virtue in Greek. And so if we talk about life in the middle, it's not about balancing this with that. It is a different logic. And if someone looks at my book, you'll see that you can say something without saying. You can say something. You can pray without praying. There was a man who prayed without praying. You know the famous you know, Pharisee and the man who was the public man who never prayed. He just bowed down and said, God have mercy. And the other one was praying. And one who did not pray was one who, who really prayed. If you go to, you can give without giving. Again, you find it in the Bible. To give without giving. The widow, she gave nothing little that she had. But Jesus said she gave everything. She gave little, but she gave more. You can give without giving. That's the logic that I try to talk about. Look at this. Abraham, he has sacrificed. Without sacrificing, did he sacrifice his son? But he gave everything and he sacrificed without sacrificing. And the depth of life, if we, get, we, we are doing only positive thinking, I think this is positive, what I hold in my hand, that's material and positive. 
I'm trying to bring the material and the spiritual together and even the moral together. So there is this right or wrong. You know, there is something of right and wrong in every one of us. Maybe there is a saint and a sinner in us. Just like Jesus is both human and divine. I mean, Jesus was never human or holy divine. He was both. And we have somewhere missed the and we can see it so very strong that he is only divine, either or we are here. Now we are facing the law in India. You can be either Indian or nobody else. You can be either, even Hindu have to be not just Hindu, they have to be Sanskari Indians. Otherwise you are not Indian. And so this is the logic that we are all living. Unfortunately, it has no question. Aristo children foundation. And that is where we need to be in deconstruct, shake up and think together two extremes and that's why William might sometimes say he could not sleep because I put two extremes together and then find somewhere the middle. And that middle sometimes is difficult, but not only absorb immediately. So these are the things which I sincerely work with, with hyphenation. My life is a hyphen in that life. I have been doing science, I have been doing faith, religion. I have been doing priesthood, I have been meeting everyone who is dialogue. I mean, I am hyphenated. And what is hyphenation? Hyphenation is a different way of believing. It is not close, internal, selfish, churchy, we use the word. No, it is open, ready to take the risk, ready to embrace. And that is Perhaps this book came out of this thought process. And actually, I have not seen this book coming. This is the question I must make. What happened was, I was writing, because of COVID, I was writing some daily and this theological and biblical writing because I was made prisoner of the room and I went on writing. And immediately, my professor, Guru, Guru observed what I was saying. I wrote 10 articles. Then Guru said, write another five, I will publish a book. I said, okay, I will put five. Give 50. Then Guru said, Guru became more ambitious. He said, write another 50. And I gave it a book. And I wrote for the other 15 and I came as a banished Christian. And I came, Guru does not talk about my book. The whole book is there, it is frozen. The JD is studying my book. But there is a project of the JD. I did not publish it. It is published by my university. Where I study, I am a PhD from there. And this is the 23rd book by that list of books they published. So this is one of the important achievements which I got without seeing whether it's come. Then afterwards, Guru is now in his group. He's going to survive the book in 17th January when Covid strikes us again. Guru suddenly calls me up. He spoke without Covid. And he says, why don't you write another 50? So another 10, because it makes 40. I said, okay, I will give you time. The book is ready, he says. But you give me time. I okay. In 10 days time I write. I wrote before 10 days actually. Anyway, those time was COVID, but uh, if I sit, I think something takes over bar and I'm just putting in a bar and I can't tell me that no problem. Somehow it works out and I did this 10 hours. And uh, that is where even I myself was surprised because that was required. And you are rightly saying. Because you can start reading my book from anywhere. It is written horizontal, not linear. It is to read from any part, any any section. So the whole point, if you start with the last one, you say, I'm talking about ecology, I'm talking about destruction, climate change, death. Can we imagine a world, the earth without human beings? We are so selfish. We think that what can be nothing without us. Animals can be nothing without us. Sorry. Everything becomes something because of our presence. Is it true? Or we have become someone because there is this tree, because there is an animal, that there is cat, there is a dog has become someone. I thought they became somebody because of me. This finger not thinking. Can I reverse that thought? I am somebody because there is this earth. I am somebody because there are animals. I am somebody because there are everything else. So this is the spirit of the book. The book is reversing our thing. And one of my problems, I am told, I am not being able to, others are not understandable. I am challenging your thinking. I and you are conditioned by either or. The moment you are ready to give up that thinking, then you see how the text speaks to you. So the text is conflicting because our logic is conflicting. As a result, you see, our texts are logic.
And as the deconstruction works, sometimes text becomes opaque and not sweet. So I thank everybody for being part of this. And thank you who saw the book coming before I was. And then I wrote and the book came. And it is, I also thank JDD for picking, now we call it JD, for picking up my text and placing it at their publication and now I'm positioning it across the globe coming from JD. And also I thank my friend Kip for giving the power and uh, Silva for looking up to my expression so that they remain correct in grammar. But I have a habit of finding words and even nouns and you can see that I write like similar to it, like in Greek, Sanskrit, everything, presuming you know them, but actually no. So that's how when I just swing through like this, I needed someone to monitor what I'm doing. So it is not either to English or Latin or either Greek or that is English, it is in between. Therefore you will see that even Nikki Nikki will be there, all kinds of Sanskrit will be there, all, all things put within the text. So I thank you for doing that and I thank Father Nelson for coming up uh, on the days to receive the first copy for my Amma where I learned to bring together theology and philosophy. And I thank all of you for patiently bearing up with this academic project. May God bless all of us and let's continue being together, experiencing love. You know that the are in somehow the day did not come here. Today. Everything is not either or. Life is in the middle of us. In the middle of people never currently things don't come the way we want. But if you can go in the middle, the middle will take us something. So thank you and God bless you. Yes, we Pustaka Chakrupi, Reverend Dr. Victor Feda. E Obtaining Caliber, the formal function of release of the paper is over. I mean, in this E Obtaining Caliber, the Sopeta, the Ithi Manatana Amakuru Nasat, Makai Sondata, I mean, Javanatya Vasya Patriya, Purkaya Pati, now Father Leonata Lagi Mata, Makami Kuru, I mean, Javanatya Vasya Patriya.
airport, yeah, for the winter on stage. What we are going to do is Thank you. 